speaking to the younger members of our family, I guess this old people have memories that like to tell stories. So I'm old enough to tell stories. I guess what I'm saying to you who are in this, this struggle is not new. You may be new, the struggle is not. Mm -hmm. I remember and after I left jail the first time, and I was so excited I was going to drop out of school. There several classrooms did to do this full time, march for a to jail. And Dr. Sam probably suggested, first of all, Mike, who y'all love so much, Mike, he's talking about Dr. King, he has a PhD. He's laid the groundwork in history and philosophy. He knows where this thing is going. And so you stay in school so you can be a long distance runner, not just an episodic runner. And so this thing does have continuity. And as I listen, as I think about we who are occupying today, in 1964, the Democratic Convention had an all-white Mississippi delegation. The big protest at that time was to get the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, H.C., at the convention in Atlantic City. And after all the, the going, all the protests took place, they got two seats for the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, so it would be all white, and wouldn't let Franklin Little Hammond have one of them. But we won that battle to open up the process. By 72 with the guard McGovern, we unseated the Mandela delegation in Chicago and Miami uh, because we were fighting for proportionality. We kept on moving. By 1968, should I say 68, uh, it, it blew up in our face because we had a meeting like this, and and people say that they told blacks, don't vote. They had big don't vote campaigns arguing. Nixon and Humphrey both racist, don't vote for racists. That was the angle used and I used in the game bank. They told young whites, don't vote for, for uh, Humphrey or Nixon because Humphrey, he's a little better than Nixon. He, he left Johnson too slow to, to be the anti-war. So he cut the edge off of the progressive whites arguing that both of the Humphrey moved too slow and told blacks that there's no difference between Humphrey and Nixon. When all that confusion ended, Nixon won about 500,000 votes. I, that's deep in my mind how they scheme on both of us, mm -hmm. you know, it's a different rationale to figure out a way to lose, and we, and we lost. Right. Uh, in 72, I said we unseated daily, because under the government, we began to change the rules to make the delegations more multicultural. We kept going. By 84, when we first ran here in, our, in, our, in, our, in Iowa, the, it was one that went to take all thing. Uh, I get 49.9, you get 50.1, you get 100. On that thing, uh, one to take all, Hillary Clinton won California, Texas, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, but barely. On the one to take all, she'd have been the winner. But on the proportionality with democratized democracy, uh, he was able to win. When Lana Grenier raised this issue of proportionality back in uh, 92 on the Clinton, she got run out of Washington on the idea. Now, we fight for proportionality. She soon encouraged in, in Iraq, but not in America. I mean, this thing gets complex, you see. Mm -hmm. And so here we are today with some big choices to make. Don't give up what you believe in, but don't believe in it so strongly you think you can do it by yourself. We cannot. Uh, going by ourselves is not an option. There are a bunch of options, so there are many options. So they, repeat, there are many options. Yeah. Going it alone yeah. is not one of them. Yeah. We cannot get so angry yeah. until we leave yeah. the family yeah. to achieve yeah. our collective interests. Yeah. And so my point is, as we look at where we're going, there are some issues that, as I said, may or may not involve you voting for whomever you want to vote for. But I look at the student loan debt crisis, we need to have some massive campus rallies on student loan debt forgiveness. Just stay right there. Others, because they're cutting on Medicare and Medicaid, we may need to go to some hospitals where people cannot get care because they're on Medicaid and won't treat Medicaid patients. Occupy that. It may be going down to a bank that engaged in the subprime uh, lending, predatory lending scheme and take folks' house. And Reverend, there may be four members of your church who are about to put out, and, and church don't let them take them. I mean, there are many ways, there's so much room to fight. The issue is we need not fight each other. 
there's more cotton to be picked than we got cotton pickers. So there's more cotton to be picked. <laughs> we got cotton pickers. There are more fights to be fought than we got fighters. So, so we got room for each other. Now, now we, can, we can learn from each other certain ways on how to organize and get to our purpose. But this room here today explains why it may be more convenient not to have these black preachers get up here and get the preaching on you. But you but except they got people. You got the idea they got people. So we need each other. So we need each other. All these talents must somehow find common ground for us to win. We all want to end corporate greed. We all want to end corporations as a person the vote. We all want to end voter suppression. We all want to end student loan exploitation. We all want to end unnecessary excessive wars. We all want to wipe out malnutrition without wiping out malnourished. We all want women's right to self-determination. We all want racial justice and gender equality. Now, y'all, that's a lot to agree on. If we stay pretty close to that, we're going to change about the politics because politicians have an amazing way of getting in front of the lines, and that's what I was saying all the while. <laughs> if enough of us are moving down the road, you'll look up and find some, want you, want you, rep, want you, kiss? People say, well, that's what I was trying to say all the time. And so if we have the right idea, Dr. King and uh, Rosa Parks, that was two, plus MIA, and they kept getting bigger. They got too big to dismiss. And so now we have a movement called Occupy. With an idea called Occupy. And let's make it so big it can't be ignored. Friends, I'm glad to have been home with you today. I look forward to keep occupying. And at some point in time, we're going to occupy streets, jail cells, and we're going to occupy voter booths. We also plan to occupy. We also plan to send Gingrich back home on the midnight train to Georgia. All right. We will not allow. 10th Amendment to undermine the half sense of work. We have fought too long and too hard to misread what the stakes are. Right. And so friends, make your choice. I made mine, but my choice is my choice. But whatever we can do, we, 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 so we're closer we're to each other than we are far apart. No matter what, no matter what angle we see, we support the occupation movement. It is a source of conscience. It is the canary in the mind. The young America must not cease fighting and must not let Occupy go away until there's economic justice. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you.